Welcome everybody to Philadelphia Christian Church, amen, hallelujah, and welcome all those that's tuning in via live stream on the internet, we praise God for you, amen, and we're going to try to open up the word and get into it tonight, amen, uh, how many people ready for the word of God, anybody ready for the word, Woo! all right, if you would, just take your Bibles and turn with me to 2 Samuel chapter 13, uh, we'll start about verse 14, and while you turn and amen, just by way of announcements, amen. It's a regular week at Philadelphia, and so we'll have Thursday evening prayer, amen. And uh, you can come to that, hallelujah. Um, also, um, we know that Christmas is coming, and uh, I'm so excited, hallelujah, uh, hallelujah, that Christmas falls on a Sunday, amen. What a blessing that is, hallelujah. And we're going we're gonna to preach about the risen Savior. We're going to preach about, amen, the true meaning of Christmas every Sunday until the 25th. And on the 25th, it's going to be logistically tough, but we'll have one service, saints. We're going to have one service. We're going to try to pack everybody in here, amen. Uh, some people are going to be sitting Indian style, and you know what I'm saying? We just, we just going to have to do what we got to do, amen. And so uh, I already told Billy Clay he was going to have to sit Indian style, amen. Uh, <laughs> I'm playing, I'm playing. But, um, and so I think the one service is going to be like 9 a.m. On, on Christmas, amen. Um, late enough for you to open your presents, but early enough for us to get out of here and you can have that, that Christmas um, um, dinner during that lunch hour, amen. And so uh, I just think it's going to be special, amen. Anybody agree with me, amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Love, we have any other announcements, anything else? Amen, amen. All right. Well, saints, we're going to go ahead and get off into it. Amen. Just uh, remember, y'all, at the end of the year, we do a few things, amen, that we've been doing uh, uh, for a long time. Uh, uh, We're we going to have all-night prayer. Amen. All-night prayer. Amen. And so December 30th, amen, right before the, the, the turn of the new year, we're going to come up in here and we're going to spend the night together and we're going to pray together, cry, testify. Amen. Y'all used to stay up all night in the world. Let's stay up for Jesus. Amen. Oh, I'm going to get to see some of y'all tied up in here. Like I told you, bring your pajamas and your little slippers. Amen. Hallelujah. Bring your little slippers. Amen. Some of the toughest men got fluffy slippers up in here. You should see them, boy. Walk up in here with them fluffy slippers. Bring your pillow. Amen. It's going to be a bunch of coffee. Amen. And uh, right after that, saints, at the turn of the year, January 1st, I hate to say it, but what is it going to be? Amen. Church fast time, amen, hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I need to lose a lot of weight, so I'm happy. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. And so, uh, yeah, we're going we gonna to get on that, that fast, man, amen. And, and so just be thinking about what you're going to do. How long are you going to fast? Remember that the first 21 days is, is the church fast, but you got to tailor make it to what you can do. Amen. And always check with your physician to make sure that you can endure any type of fasting. But uh, some of the leaders or whatever like that, we're going to be going maybe the full 21 day, maybe. You know what I'm saying? But we're going to see how it go. You know what I'm saying? We're going to see how it go. And so uh, we'll talk more about it, amen, as the date approaches. Hallelujah. Well, saints, let's go ahead and look at the word of God and... Uh, Hallelujah. Um, we'll get to uh, women's Bible studies this Monday, huh, love? Yes. This Monday coming up? Yes. All right, so women's Bible study this Monday. Uh, men's group as well going to be this Monday. So just trying to remember everything before we get started. So let's look at 2 Samuel 13. We'll start off at verse 14 and kind of get going. Amen. The Bible says in verse 14, Howbeit he would not hearken unto her voice. But being stronger than she, forced her and lay with her. Then Amnon hated her exceedingly, so that the hatred wherewith he hated her was greater than the love wherewith he had loved her. And Amnon said unto her, Arise, be gone. And she said unto him, There is no cause. This evil in sending me away is greater than the other that thou, hast done, that thou didst unto me. But he would not hearken unto her. Then he called his servant that ministered unto him and said, Put now this woman out from me and bolt the door after her. And she had a garment of diverse colors upon her. For with such robes were the king's daughters that were virgins appareled. 
Then his servant brought her out and bolted the door after her. And Tamar put ashes on her head and rent her garment of diverse colors that was on her and laid her hand on her head and went on crying. And Absalom, her brother, said unto her, Had Amnon thy brother been with thee? But hold now thy peace, my sister. He is thy brother. Regard not this thing. Uh, so Tamar remained desolate in her brother Absalom's house. Father, we thank you for your word. We pray you add a blessing to the reading, to the hearing, and the exposition of it in your most holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Saints of God, we've been in 2 Samuel, and we have observed how Amnon, amen, lusted after his own sister, if you remember, Tamar, and how he could do nothing to her because of the safety mechanisms that were put in place by the early Hebrews, amen. They really didn't allow men and women, amen, or men and young girls, maidens, amen, to have any, amen, interaction. And so there was a, a, a boundary that was set there. And we said that this was good because we don't want to give place to the devil, amen. We said it was good, amen, because, listen, we can't be ignorant of his devices, amen. We said that this was good, amen, because you don't want to put no confidence in the flesh, amen. And so, hallelujah, when this was placed into, in, 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 into operation, Amnon could do nothing to his sister. And the Bible says that pretty much the lust was put in check. Until one of Amnon's friends, Jonadab, came up with a wicked idea. Amen. Uh, Amnon would pretend to be sick. David would come in. He would ask David to send Tamar to his house. And that's just what happened. David came in and struggling with his own affairs, amen, not really using discernment and knowing what's going on. We'll probably talk about him in the next Tuesday or next two Tuesdays, amen, and just talk about him and where he is in life. But he sends his daughter, amen, in harm's way. She proceeded to cook. Amnon put everybody out, grabbed her by the hand and said, lie with me, my sister. Tamar refuses to do so. She says, nay, my brother. She says, stuff like that should not happen in Israel. She called it folly. She tells him, stop thinking about yourself and being selfish. Stop letting your flesh control you. Amen. You need to think deeper about this. Think about my life and how you're going to ruin my life. And think about your life, how you're about to ruin your life. You're heir to the throne, Amnon. Get a grip. But in spite of our arguments, Amnon still forced her. He still violated her. He raped her. Lust made him unreasonable. Amen. And we, we, we just spoke about, amen, how we got to put lust in check before, amen, it gains momentum in our life. We really got to deal with it in the infancy stages, amen. We got to mortify that flesh, amen. We can't wait until it get grown and big in our lives because usually that'll be too late, amen. And so we talked about that on last Tuesday. After the sinful deed, the Bible says he hated her. And the feelings were based, he, the feelings were hate because his love was based solely on lust. And after he got what he wanted, it was over. Uh, he hated her because uh, sin never delivers what, what it promises. And so he was let down. He hated her because of conviction. His conscience tore him apart, the guilt, the shame of what he had done, of what he had become. He tells her, arise and be gone. Get out of my face. I don't want to see you no more. After he did her, what he did her. She says, there's no cause. You put me out like I did you wrong. You're the one who sinned against me. You violated me, she says. You know? She said, don't send me away. Sending me away in this condition is worse than what you did me. You see? You never even said you were sorry yet. You never took into consideration that I'm the daughter of a king. You see? You never even considered any mitigating factors, amen, that Deuteronomy still says that you can still marry me and we can kind of cover this thing up and save some face in the eyes of God and in the eyes of the kingdom and you just say, arise and be gone. You're not thinking at all, am I? You see, he was treating the daughter of a king like a harlot, like a prostitute, like a street woman. And there are many men and maybe even men of God who's still doing that tonight. So we're going to get deeper into this. We're going to talk more about this. Tonight we want to focus in on verse 17 and we'll go verse by verse and hopefully stop at verse 20. Amen. 
Uh, I'm going to try to get there tonight, you know, but I'm putting the timer on me. I'm going to stop at a certain time, no matter where I'm at, amen? I've been keeping y'all too long, you know. So let's begin with verse 17. The Bible says, Then he called his servant that ministered unto him and said, Put now this woman out from me and bolt the door after her. Look how he addresses Tamar. He doesn't call her Tamar. He doesn't say, my sister. All the terms of endearment, words of affection are out the window. They're gone. He addresses her. He says, put this woman. You see? This woman. Like he don't even know her anymore. This is the one where he couldn't sleep and couldn't eat over. Now he didn't got what he wanted. He called her this woman. All right? But it gets worse, Philip. If you know your Bible, amen, I, I told you before that in the King James, anything written in italics has been added to the original Hebrew text. So the King James adds a word here to make it easier to read. But if you're looking at the King James, you will find that the word woman is in italics. This woman would have been bad enough. But what he really said is he says, put now this out from me. Don't even call her a woman. This, like she was some object, some consumable asset. This, like she was a piece of trash, told his servant, put this out from me. Listen to me good. Listen to me good. That's the way a lot of young men are doing our women today. They're not dealing with them as women. They're not dealing with them as human beings. They're not dealing with them as, as daughters of the living God. Put this away from me, especially after they get what they want. Them brothers out there, amen, you know how it go. They get it and they gone. Anybody hear me up in here? All right? All right? They hit it and quit it. All right? Can I keep it real here? Can I keep it real? You'd rather hear it in church? Come on. This is in every race, but listen, in the Hebrews, we got a problem. All right? We got a problem. I'm going to talk a little bit about, about it tonight in verse 17. You see? Put this away from me. Yeah. Because you're not holding yourselves, woman of God. Because you're not following the scriptures, they're treating you like this. Instead of like her, instead of like your name, instead of like daughter of God, they're saying, put this. And in our music, they're calling you worse things than what I could say up here. Now listen to me. Listen to me. One more God. Let me talk with you. Part of that is your fault tonight. You, you're part of the blame for what's going on in our community now. And not only the way they're treating you, amen, which is atrocious enough, but all the ills of our society, you got a heavy part to play in that woman of God. Can I talk with you here for a second? The single parent, the poverty, the sexually transmitted diseases. You at least have to blame for that. He says, put this woman. You see? A lot of the times they treat the women of God like trash because, hey, sometimes they acting like it. Woo! I'm going to need some extra security on my way out. <laughs> listen, listen, listen. I'm going to have to throw some cold water on you tonight. I'm going to have to shock you now. The only way to change our condition and our situation, amen, is through shocking all tactics. Amen. We messed up, man. All right? And it's seeping into every, every race and nationality. All right? So everything I say in regards to the Hebrews can be applied to every race. All right? But we got it bad. We got it bad. You saw the statistics I put up. 
what, what, 70, over 70% 70 single parent? Kids born out of wedlock? In other nations, it's around 20%. The, the, the uh, 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 Asian nations is, is just like in the teens, 19%. We, we had 72%. Almost 8 out of 10 are born in a single parent situation. Houston, we have a problem. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. All right. Woman of God, you have to stop allowing lesser men to do this thing to you. All right? Because that's what you're dealing with. You're dealing with lesser men. You're the daughter of a king, amen, and you're playing with the dogs and the cats out in the yard, amen? You with me so far? You're the daughter of a king, and you're settling for lesser men. All right? All right? We got some women of God in here, amen? You couldn't pick a good man. If we fill the Cajun Dome with good men and put one bad man in there, you're going to come out with the knucklehead. You, you, go, you, go, you know what I'm saying? I, I look up, Lord, I tried. I, I stacked the test. She gonna come out with the drug dealer. She gonna come out. You know what I'm saying? All right? And I'm gonna be real with you. Sometimes you can't trust yourself. Woman of God, you gotta learn that sometimes you can't even trust yourself with this decision. You're gonna have to lean on God's everlasting arms. You're gonna have to, you're gonna have to, whoo, in all your ways, acknowledge him for him to direct your path. I'm trying, I'm trying to tell you something. You, you gotta stop allowing these lesser men to do this to you. You see, unlike Tamar, Tamar was forced. You doing this by consent. You agreed. You paying for the room. You You paying to be treated like trash. This woman. Oh. Deli, I'm gonna need, I'm gonna need. Y'all break out the heavy weapons. You consent to it. Listen, woman of God, what I'm trying to say is stop committing sexual immorality. Just stop it. Just stop it. God bless the truth. Listen, just stop it. You're not married to that man, amen? You do not lay in the bed with the man. You do not have any type of physical relation with that man. Just stop it. You see what I'm saying? Just stop it. Pastor, if I don't, if I don't do that with him, he might leave me. <laughs> Baby, let me, give you a little, let me give you a little game here for a second. <laughs> if you run into one of these, he going to leave you whether you do it or you don't do it, amen? Hey! Listen to me. All right? All right? And if he one of those, amen, and you don't participate in that type of immorality, all right, when he leaves, if you are not invested, if you ain't gave him nothing, if you ain't, he going to leave and you're going to be dancing up in there. Look. Because you're not invested. But if you don't invest it and gave your body, that's a totally different breakup. That's a totally different breakup. You see? Listen to me. Without sexual immorality, woman of God, the little relationships that you get into are going to be a lot less costly to your spirit, your soul, and your mental state. Because we're not doing it God's way, amen, we're destroying ourselves. It's sad to say my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. God don't want you to be with no man that's not your husband. Are oh, you listening to me right now? You listening to me? All right. I have in my notes, the breakups become a lot costlier because souls get involved when intimacy happens. You've created what we call a soul tie, all right? 
And breakups after a soul tie are like little divorces. If anybody ever been through a divorce, you know how hard that is. Amen? And even after people divorce, you see, there's still some, mm, some, some, some remnants that's there. Right? That's because of the soul ties. Listen to me. Intimacy is what, what, what we call, and we've, we've been doing marriage ministry a long time, you know. We was doing marriage ministry while we were still in college, you know. Uh, God bless you. <laughs> Intimacy is what we call the act of marriage. It is the act of marriage. Intimacy is what marriage looks like. It is the two becoming one. It is the act of marriage. In fact, in biblical times, marriage was not even legitimate or legalized until the consumption had happened, the consummation had happened. Anybody hearing me up in here? It was the weirdest thing. They'd wait outside the door for it. I'd be like, can y'all go home and give me a little privacy? You know? Anyway, come on, come on, listen. All right? Because it's the act of marriage. Now, now when you commit sexual immorality, you're doing what's called the act of marriage, but y'all not married. And every time y'all do the act of marriage and he leave you, he taking a piece of you with him. It's like little divorces. And in the day in which we live in, amen, young ladies have about 10 little, 10 little divorces before they even graduate from high school. And I'm talking about the slow ones. Ten little divorces, ten spiritual soul tied divorces because they done went from one to another from ninth grade to, to twelfth grade. And they wonder why, amen, they messed up, broken, shattered, need medication to keep going on. Because you see, you had ten divorces and that was just high school. It, college? The capital party? Returning? So after college, it's not 10 no more, it go up to 20, 30. 30 soulish, spiritual divorces. Right? After college, they may enter the dating scene and go in the club. Miami Moon. <laughs> and every month, it could be a different relationship. Now we enter the 40s and the 50s here. You done had 50 divorces before you even got serious about being married to a man. Broken, shattered, on medication. Listen, daddies and mamas, listen to me in here. You do everything that you can not to let that be the story of that child that's sitting next to you tonight. I'm talking about the women and the men. I'm, I'm, I'm. Don't let them be considered trash, this woman. You're not trash. Don't let them be considered trash. All right? You see? It's so much pain. It's so much pain and grief. You got to understand, psychologically, pain classically conditions us. Meaning that we know not to touch a hot stove because of the pain it causes. Oh, listen to me. Now listen to me. Now, if the women of, the, if, 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 God, if, the, if, if God's children, the women, amen, go through pain, amen, every time they commit to a young man, uh -huh, and, and, and want to be with that young man, amen, and be intimate with that young man, amen, and since high school has just been grief and pain and rejection and these soulish divorces that go on. How do you think that woman going to be classically conditioned in the future? What's going to happen subconsciously in her mind, amen, she's going to think that every time intimacy in, is involved, heartbreak and grief is going to come afterwards. That's why we have some women, even after a lawful biblical marriage, still don't want to be intimate with their husbands. Because intimacy coming up has always left them heartbroken, grieving, 
hurting woman of God, that might be that foothold the devil got on you tonight. Right now, you can't give due benevolence, amen, because in your spirit, every time you gave yourself, they ran over you and stepped on you. And in your heart of hearts, you believe that your husband going to do the same thing. But the devil is a liar, amen, hallelujah. And we here to renew our minds and get the devil's lies out of our minds. Let me go deeper if I can. Now, even some woman, women, hallelujah, some woman in here, but some women, hallelujah, who've been classically conditioned so bad, hurt, stepped on, every time they give themselves, partly their fault because you shouldn't give yourself because you should follow the word of God, but you went out and didn't follow the word, and you've given yourself to young men, and it's been pain and grief every single time. It's gotten so bad that some of our women don't even want men no more. Ooh, they going out and being with other women now. Because the men done step on them, crush them, treated them like I'm not this woman, this trash. They crossing over and won't be with a woman now. Because they feel like a woman can treat them better than a man. That's not the answer, friend. The answer is not to break law, God's commandments more. The answer is to go back, obey, keep yourself, hold yourself, make Jesus your husband. Hallelujah. No play until after the day. Then that man of God going to come in your life. Then you're going to have something to work with. The answer not to go lesbian or, or something like that. Y'all don't hear me up in here. See, that's what's going to fix it, y'all. Mm. That's what's going to fix it. Listen, woman of God, I just want to tell you one more thing. We're going to move to the next verse. You see? Woman of God, it takes two to tango. And men can't dance by themselves. I say, Lord, what do you want me to tell the women of God that's in this place tonight? He said, tell them they're the gatekeepers. <laughs> tell them they're the gatekeepers. Meaning that no sexual immorality can happen between a man or a woman unless you allow it, woman of God. Anybody hear me up in here? Meaning that the moment y'all Get your mind on the word of God and get your mind on Christ. All fornication is going to be over with in our community. You are the gatekeeper. Anybody hear me up in here? I'm talking to a young couple that may be engaged or they might be boyfriend, girlfriend. And they're struggling, amen, to stay right before the Lord. And it's a battle, Amen. To not fornicate. Amen. I want to charge the woman of God in that relationship. I want to charge you, amen, because you're built different than a man. All right? Hallelujah. The man is going to be weaker than you in that area. You will be stronger in that area. You can say no and it's not going to affect you too much. Him, he can barely say no. Oh, I mean. You are the gatekeeper. And as the gatekeeper, when you say no, all right, it's no. And he going to respect your decision. He going to come up and say, oh, she was, oh, yeah. That's my wife. I'm going to marry her. All right. And I won't tell y'all too much of our business, all right? But after we had got saved, when the woman of God did no, it was no. And I had a no in my heart, but I just, my heart, when, when, when I try to do right, evil is always present. I, I'm trying to, let's see. It was a long time ago, but I'm just saying. And I'm looking at it, you got to help me here.
I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm trying to give you my testimony, all right? The Bible says we overcome by the word. About, I, I did all right, man. Is this okay? She like, <laughs> cool. <laughs> we going to see in the morning after the email. Listen. <laughs> what I'm saying is you don't have to be this woman anymore. I mean, you don't have to be that. That's your choice whether you want to be that. And my prayer tonight is that, listen, that God will grab hold of you. And you'll realize that you're a gatekeeper. And that, that, and that what you do, amen, not only affects you, but it's affecting our whole community. What would happen if all of the women of God, all of the Hebrews, all the singles, all of the young ladies would say, listen, this gate is staying locked, amen. Amen. This gate is staying locked, amen, until God sends my husband who's going to have the key to this gate, amen. Ain't nobody else coming. Amen. Do you know what single parenthood would do? Hallelujah. Listen, listen. It would, it, would, it would vanish in our community. You know what food stamp, welfare, you know what that would do? It would vanish in our community. You understand what I'm saying? You know what, you know what, you know what subsidized housing project, you know what that would do in our community? It would vanish in our community. Anybody, because listen, listen, if she's not praying until the day, then every single one would be married. Every child born would have a mama and a daddy. Woman of God, you're the gatekeeper tonight. I need you. Can you help a brother out? You already know how the Hebrew men made it. Help a brother out. Help a brother out. Come on, give God some glory. Amen. <laughs> Woo! Verse 18. The Bible says, and she had a garment of diverse or many colors upon her. For with such robes were the king's daughters that were virgins apparel. Then his servant brought her out and bolted the door after her. And God grabbed my attention in verse 18. You see, Tamar wore a garment, amen. In these days, we would call it like a tunic, amen, or maybe like a robe, hallelujah. And this garment, amen, when we look at the Hebrew word of it, it was a long garment, amen. Some of the uh, translators and the commentators, amen, of antiquity, Matthew, Henry, and whatnot, they say that the, the garment went from the palm of Tamar's hand all the way to the soles of her feet. You see what I'm saying? It was a long garment, amen. Uh, not only was it long, it was a garment or a coat or a robe of many colors, amen. And anybody could think of somebody else in our Bible who wore a coat of many colors. That's right, Joseph, amen. And, 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 and Joseph was given this, amen, uh, because he was special. Oh, God, help me, somebody. Be, it, he was given this because of, hallelujah, uh, uh, he wanted, hallelujah, they, the person who gave it to him wanted to uh, uh, single him out for attention, notoriety. Amen. When he walked in the room, you knew, you knew Joseph was there. Amen. He was special. He was set apart. Amen. This Joseph. And to me, in my spirit, amen, David did this for Tamar. Amen. For the same reason. She was special. She was in the trash. Amen. That Amnon was trying to make her. Amen. She was set apart. Amen. Royalty and the king's daughter. And so as I began to think about this, amen, God gave me three words for us tonight. Amen. And, and these words are going to apply, amen, first to our young girls. Amen. I'm talking about like 18 and under. Amen. It's also going to apply to our single women. Amen. And it should apply as well to our married women. Hallelujah. And so... If you're listening, the three words would be what this, this robe, this garment of many colors, what, what it represented was, number one, royalty. Number two, purity. And number three, modesty. Oh, God. Oh, God. 
Pastor, after the women of God today, I'm doing it for your good, woman of God. And you shouldn't be mad at all. It's the men that's going to be the most mad after this service. Not the husbands, them little, them little men, them little player players from the Himalayas, them right out. Right? It represented royalty because Tamar was part of the royal family. She was a daughter of King David. And God wanted me to tell you, woman of God, amen. I'm talking about everybody from uh, two all the way up. Amen. Every woman of God in here, you are royalty as well. All right? All right? You see, there are some occasions where, hallelujah, a woman of God couldn't act like trash because subconsciously she may think that she is. And it could be because of what mama or daddy said or what people who came into her life did unto her. Amen? And a lot of times, abusers, that's what they do. They abuse, abuse you mentally before they abuse you physically. Because if they can make you think in your mind that you're not worth anything, then you're going to feel like the damage they do you, the abuse they give you, amen, that you shouldn't expect anything else in life. But I'm here to tell you that the devil is a liar, amen. And you are worth something tonight. Hallelujah, you're worth something tonight. Hey, God, pastor, what am I worth? You're worth the king of glory coming down and dying on the cross for you. You're worth him suffering and bleeding on that cross. You're worth him, hallelujah, getting beat on his back with the cat of nine tails. I want to tell you, woman of God, if you were the only person on earth that would accept Jesus, he would have went to the cross and he would have laid down that priceless, precious, hallelujah, perfect life for you. He would have did it for you. You here thinking that you have no work because an uncle done mess you up or because a daddy left you and abandoned you. Because he didn't even have the gall, the, 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 oh God, the decency to sign your birth certificate. But the Bible says, though mother and father forsake me, the Lord is going to pick me up. Hey, God. And even if, hallelujah, nobody else thought you was worth something, God thinks you're worth it. He thinks you're worth it so much, he not only died, for the cross, died on the cross for you, amen. He left you some adoption papers, amen. Anybody hear me up in here? Left you some adoption papers. It's like the Lord passed through the orphanage of the world. Hey, God. And he looked at all the children that was there. He looked through the window and he saw you play in there. Hey, God. And you could have been messed up, hell, knotted up, nappy, hey, amen. In the worst clothes, hey, amen, whatever. But as Father God was looking through the window, hallelujah, he told the world, give me her. Ooh. Hand pick you. Bible said you had not chosen me, but I have chosen you. Hey, God. I don't know about you. Hey, God. But when God come out and choose you, pick you out of a crowd, and say, you for me, I don't know about you, but that speaks value on me. That speaks worth to me. That speaks... Woo! Not only say you for me, but took you into his home. Hallelujah. Gave you a book of promises for you, woman of God. Say, Lord, I'm going to be with you even until the end of the age. Amen. You ain't got to fear nothing. Amen. I'm going to be your provider. I'm going to be your protector. I'm going to be your shield and your buckler. And until you get an earthly husband, I'm going to be your husband. I'm going to be your daddy. I'm going to be your mom. I'm going to be I am to you. You see, that's, that's worth. Then the day came when daddy looked down at you and said, listen, I'm tired of you having the last name that you have. I want you to have my name. And so he pulled out the paperwork. And he signed his name on that. A legal document, a legal document of adoption. And adoption, hallelujah, is a legal process. Whereby a father takes a child who is not biologically his. Puts his name on that child. Gives that child the right to use the name. Not only use the name, but that adoption process 
gives that child all of the rights of the biological children. They're not biologically his, but adoption gives that adopted child all of the legal rights. That mean when that daddy died, hey, God, they got an inheritance right. Amen. That mean, come on, somebody. That's why I can say that you're royalty. You're royalty tonight, woman of God, because you was adopted by the king of kings. And the daughter of a king is a princess. Why are you allowing these men to treat you like trash? Why are you allowing that? Why are you allowing that? You don't go laying down with just no anybody. First Peter 2 9 expresses what I'm trying so hard to put into words. Woman of God, even man of God. And man of God, think of your daughter, amen. But ye are a chosen generation, hand selected, hand selected, called out of the crowd. Many are called, but few are chosen. You're waiting for the young, the, the young popular man to choose you when the Most High has already chosen you. What you waiting for that little? <laughs> you are a chosen generation. But here it is. You are a royal priesthood. The royalty comes from the adoption. The priesthood is what we're supposed to be on earth. There's a certain way we operate and we roll, but we're going to get to that in a second. A holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who had called you out of darkness, called you out of the orphanage, pulled you out of the dumpster, walked by and saw you in the blood and say, hallelujah, said until you live, you shall not die. That's what he did for you. That's what he did. Called you out your own blood and girded you and dressed you, put earrings and jewelry on you. How you going to play the harlot on him after he done did all that for you? That's what he said in Ezekiel. How you going to do that? He, he looked up and he said, what wrong have I done unto you? He said, for you to go out and do that to me. Your royalty. The coat represented royalty. The coat represented purity. Pastor, what does that mean? Purity. In Titus 2.11 the Bible talks about our salvation. And it says, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation had appeared to all men. See, grace is how we save. Pastor, what is grace? Grace is unmerited favor. It's when somebody gives you something that you do not deserve. You, 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 you can't do anything for it. It's just benevolence. It's like a Christmas gift. You see? And, and, and explain grace, Pastor. Well, we didn't deserve it because we all sinners. And the wages of our sin is death. And we deserve hell. But God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So we come to God and we confess him. And whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. A salvation that they do not deserve. But he will give it to them in an unmerited favor type of way. They don't deserve it, but he's going to give them grace. That's why the old hymnists say, amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Woo! T'was grace that taught my heart to fear. And grace my fears relieved. How precious what did that grace appear. The hour I first believed. He gave it to us for free, saints. For by grace are you saved. And that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation had appeared to all men. The offer is to all. But after we save, okay, he, okay, grace is the door we enter in. Come all. Come any kind of way. Bring all your mess, your junk, everything. Whosoever will, come. That's grace. 
He accepts us as we are, but he never leaves us as we were. All right? All right? All right? So the door to come in is easy. All right? But once you get in, God says, all right, you say, now let's get to work. Oh, God, I thought I could have stayed doing what I was doing. No, 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 no. I said that I was going to save you in your mess that you was in. But I never said I was going to leave you in your mess. I, I, never, I never said that I'm going to save you in your mess, but I'm not going to leave you in your mess. So the next verse, amen, is after salvation. Okay, uh, verse 11 is salvation, grace that brings salvation. Verse 12, after we get saved, he begins to teach us that we should deny ungodliness. Things that's not like God, we should deny it. Don't live like that. We should also deny worldly lust. This world is not our home. We shouldn't even be living like the world or going after the things of the world. Well, after we get saved, he begins to teach us that we should live soberly. Not intoxicated by anything. No drug, no drink, no legal, no illegal, no lean, no codeine, no nothing. No nothing, no nothing. We should not be intoxicated by anything. All right? That we should be sober. The Bible said be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary roaming about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. You ain't got time to be drunk. Would you, been in, would, would you be drunk in the middle of Vietnam battlefield? Would you be drunk in Desert Storm and Desert Shield? Would you be drunk in Afghanistan right now? Would you be drunk, amen, in the Syria civil war? There's a war going on. There's no time to be drunk. You gotta, woo! You gotta be sober. No time to be high. You got casualties happening out there. You see, he teaches us to be sober, to be righteous, follow his law, to be godly, to look like him. Where? When does he want us to be sober and godly? Look what he says, in this present world, right now, right now. Some people say, I'm going to wait to get right when I get to heaven. The devil is a liar. All right? You right? You right? That's what the Bible says. In Romans 12, I beseech you, therefore, brother, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living sacrifice right now, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. How? By the renewing of your mind. You see what I'm saying? We do that now. We strive for perfection now. Be ye holy, God says, for I am holy. All right, anybody hear me up in here? We press towards the mark now. Any Christian that's on cruise control, that's not striving, not trying to be right, not hunger and thirsting for righteousness, listen, listen, listen. If you don't have a hunger or a thirst for righteousness, I got to check and see if you're really born again. You with me so far? Hey! The first way you can tell if a baby is healthy. Mm. Hey! First way you can tell if a baby is healthy, hey, God, anybody hear me up in here, all right, is the appetite. Mm. See, little Omar got sick. He, he, he wasn't eating. And for that boy not to eat, man, you know, something. Your appetite, amen, is a sign whether you're healthy or not. You see, lost people don't hunger for righteousness. Woo! You see, when you start hungering for right, you, you haven't been hungry before. You're going to know in January. You haven't been, all right? When you're hungry, that's, you, mm, mm. You want it, and you are uncomfortable until you get it. Is that the way you are, audience? You want it, and you're uncomfortable until you get it? Huh? Are you like that? Are you like the sheep that gets muddy and stands still until the shepherd come clean them up, uncomfortable being, hallelujah, muddy and wet? Are you like the pig who loved the wallowing in the mud? It's a question of not works, no. It's a question of natures. It's a question of creation. It's a, it's a question of, hallelujah, ha, which one are you? I'm not talking about works, no. I'm talking about you trying to clean yourself up. 
I'm talking about it's a question of who are you? See, because if you're born again, you won't like the mud. Anybody hear me up in here? It, it, it don't mean you don't fall. You may fall in the mud every now and then, but you sure don't like getting dirty. All right? I don't know how we got all the way here, but let's just, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Purity, that's where we were. Woman of God, you got to be pure in this present world. You can't be lying down with anybody. You, you a gatekeeper. And he expect you, woman of God, to abstain from all worldly lust, fleshly lust, that war against your soul. Where my gatekeepers at? Where my gatekeepers at? Where my gatekeepers at? You see? What else should we do? We get saved, now we striving for righteousness. What else? Verse 13, looking for the blessed hope. Our attention should be on the coming king. Not even consumed with this world because this world is not our home. The glorious appearing of our great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. And why are we looking for him so hard? Because he gave himself for us. And this verse is because in it is the essence of salvation. He gave himself for us. Why? That he might redeem us from all iniquity. He wanted to save us from our own sins. Buy us back. Set us free. Why else? So we can go back and get dirty again? He want, you, want, you want Jesus to die for your sins, clean you up so you can go back and live like the devil? No. He died to redeem us from our iniquity. And what? And to purify unto himself a peculiar people, a different people, a people that when they look at you, they say, you don't act like everybody else. You're not doing what everybody else is doing. You know, you, you're the first little woman I met, amen, and I done threw all my money down. I done, I done, I done showed you my rims on my car. I, I'm, I'm the biggest drug dealer in Lafayette. And most of them little women would be, they'd be scratching on my door at night. But, but here you are, you won't even call. Yeah, Negro, that's right. Because ain't nothing shaking. I, I've been purified. I've been redeemed, purified, amen. I'm, a, I'm part of the peculiar people, amen. Amen. I'm part of a peculiar people. Amen. All right. Well, when I can talk to you, well, you see, uh, my best time is on Sundays at 10 o'clock. If you come Sunday at 10 o'clock at 200 West, well, that's a strange address. No, no, no. Just come. Don't worry about it. There's going to be a lot of other people there, but just go ahead and sit down in there, and you're going to be able to talk to me. Get that brother saved, all right? All right. All right. The garment meant royalty, the garment meant purity, and the garment also meant modesty. Pastor, what's modesty? Modesty is like meekness, strength under control. But it's not physical strength, you know? It's uh, beauty kind of strength when we talk about it with women. And some of y'all Hebrew women strong in that department. Hey, God. And y'all got to practice modesty. Pastor, what you mean? I mean, you don't have to show all your body to attract men. Ooh. Modesty means you got to cover yourself. You can't show everything. You know what I'm saying? It's holding something back. It's not showing it all. You see? You see, the way this thing operated, amen, with Tamar, it was a long robe. Amen? Who's going to be my model today? You go ahead, get two people in pretty. Go ahead. I was going to get Jenna and Cameron. Cam, come see Cam. Jenna and Cam. Come on, Cam, don't be shy. Now, Cam, put that on like that, Cam. <laughs> put that on like that, Cam. All right, you see that? You, see that? you got that, Cam. Go ahead, Cam. <laughs> now, I'm, I'm going to get them now. Now, y'all come on stage. <laughs> <laughs> now, look, this is what pastor look at every Sunday. Look, look all these people. Look. Make y'all nervous. Huh? All right, so the tunic, turn around, Cam, turn around for me. Turn around, Jen. 
Y'all see that? All right, now you're going to have to walk on that side so they can show, they can show them on this side. The tunic, and, and, and the tunic, the garment was even longer than that. It was all the way to the palm, all the way to the heel. And it was a coat of many colors. And, and it, it, when they walked in, they, the people knew. They knew that they were the king's son. They knew that they were pure and keeping themselves until marriage. Amen. But they also saw modesty when they looked at him. Anybody hear me up in here? Come on, give God some glory. All right. Hallelujah. Cam, you did good, Cam. Jenny, you did awesome. Amen. Now, y'all, now y'all, that belonged to my wife. Yeah, y'all. You know what I'm saying? We're going to work on getting y'all something, though, Cam. All right. All right. You see, a lot of things, a lot of, a lot of problems we have in, in the Hebrew church is, you know, Jesus saving a soul, but he's not saving a closet. You know what I'm saying? Their closet's still hell bound. You know what I'm saying? Oh, their closet still belong to the devil. The devil, the dirty devil. We done got them out the club, but their attire is still Miami Moon. Y'all don't hear me up in here. Modesty is a part of legitimate Christianity. When you become a real legitimate Christian, you cannot continue to dress any kind of way. All right? All right? Christianity should change your dress. And I know a lot of churches not going to preach this because a lot of churches don't want to make you mad. A lot of churches worry about whether you're going to come back or not. I'm not worried about that. I'm not. I'm not. You, you know what I mean? You're going to come back. Amen? If you want to hear it, you're going to come back. Now, this particular sermon, uh, uh, a subject, it burned people up. I love it. It burned them up. I'm talking about, they'd be burnt with me up in there. In fact, I might go out and shake some hands after service just to see. All right? Listen to me now. Listen to me. This right here, this modesty, all right? Because you know why? Listen. Listen. Pat, let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. I get so excited. All right. Let, let's, get you, let's get your closet saved now. Get your closet set. All right? What does that mean? And, my, and, and look, my, my, new, my new sister's up in here. And, and the daddies and the mamas. Y'all listen good. All right? Because y'all, y'all not doing it, though. Oh, I done seen pictures. Because y'all think that modesty only apply on Sundays and... All right, let's go, let's go, let's go. All right, what does it mean, Christian, that in your Christianity, you can't dress with something that's too low? All right? Us brothers in here, we, we, when we, we see it too low, we say, she from Cleveland. <laughs> she must play for Cleveland. I just made that up yet. Babe, I'm, I just made that up, babe. I'm just, I ain't saying nothing. I'm turning my head. I'm looking down. Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense son to me. You know how I roll. All right, all right, all right. But brother, y'all, y'all know them girls that play for Cleveland. Y'all know why I'm saying that. They're all the Cleveland. You can't play for Cleveland. The Cavaliers, the Browns, you can't play for none of their teams. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta be up to here. It ain't gotta be up to here. You ain't gotta cover your Adam's apple. You just can't play for Cleveland. All right? Now, here's the All the clothes they sell in the stores today are from Cleveland. All the stores are from, all, all the clothes from Cleveland. So you're going to have to use a little ingenuity. All right? You're going to have to get you what we call a little undie shirt. All right? So say it with me. An undie shirt. That's right. And you can coordinate undie shirts. They brilliant. They brilliant. They brilliant. You can match them with your shoes, and you can match them with your. You know, undie shirts are. They're amazing. They spice up your outfits. I'm telling you. And they bless the brothers. They bless the brothers beyond me. They're great. They're great undie shirts. So it can't be too low. That's what that means. You see what I'm saying? If we, if you could see any of that, you no. No, don't come to church like that. Don't come to church like that. 
I'm going to share with you why in a second. Ooh, time flying. Come on, slow down time. All right, so it can't be too low, and it can't be too high. Oh! You see what I'm saying? That's like Michael Jackson's song. Too high to get over. Too low to get on. It can't be. Sometimes it's too high. When I say too high, I'm talking about shorts. I'm talking about um, skirts. Uh, now they got shirts. Anybody know what we call those shirts? That's like dresses. What y'all call them? Dresses. Because they're selling, they, they selling shirt dresses now. And they stop right up. You know. Y'all, you saw they, they, they stop right up. You're hoping it's not windy outside the way some of them dress. You're like, God, I got to get out of here. So it can't be too low, and it can't be too hot. Don't buy no shreshes. If you get your shresh, wear it with some jeans. I'll put you some tights under that, but, but it's got to be a long, long enough shresh. All right? To cover your equator. You can't be, you can't. It's got to be, I'm, I'm just saying, I mean, we got to, you can't be out there showing all your equator and all that. <laughs> I'm trying my best. I'm trying my best. Listen to me now. This is, this is important. <laughs> my cousin cutting up Magna. Listen, can't be too low, can't be too high, and it can't be too tight. All right? Listen to me now. Listen to me. Hebrews. 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 All them clothes that they make is not for y'all. See, y'all got a certain, uh, certain, what y'all call that design? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They, you see, they, Y'all can't wear it just know anything. All right? See what I'm saying? I'm saying, I'm saying. Y'all can't wear all of that. You know? Y'all can't wear all of that. Them, 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 them Hebrews trying to put on them skinny jeans and all that like that, y'all. We not made skinny. We not made skinny. We, we, we not made skinny. All right? We, we not, they, they, how they say that? We, we made tick. We made tick. That's how we made. We not made skin. We made tick. Not thick, no. Ooh, she tick. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So you got. So we gotta watch what we wear. You know what I'm saying? You know. I mean, you know, it can't be too tight. If it's too tight, it ain't right. You know what I'm saying? It's too tight. It ain't right. You know what I'm saying? Now, now, now they wearing them little exercise tights. All right, and they got here with it on right now. Don't feel bad. Just, just, just hold your head up high and say, "I didn't know." But after this message, Pastor, I'm good. All right, you can't wear them little tights just like that. You're showing all your equator. You got, you got all your equator. You got your equator and your prime meridian showing. You, you, you can't. You can't wear that like that. I'm trying my best. I'm trying my best. If you're gonna wear the tights, they got to, you got to wear a shresh with them tights. You got to, you got to, it's got to be the is you can't wear that like that. Back in my day, tights was like what you wore under shorts. Now they meant they wearing pants tights. Pen pen tights. And so they wearing the pen tights. They're wearing the Pentites, and I know that's what the Amorites and the Canaanites and the Hittites wore. They was wearing the Pentites. Thus come the wrath of God on the Pentites. He told Joshua, you destroy all the Pentites up in there. What's up, my uncle? All right, all right. Y'all clowning way too much. I got to make them laugh. They ain't going to receive me now. You can't wear that anywhere like that. You got to cover yourself. Not too low, not too high, not too tight. Why, Pastor? And we're going to conclude. Let me show you the scriptures. Because if I just tell you that, some of y'all are going to hear me and walk out of here and keep dressing like you're dressing. 
He got to save you wholly, your whole person. Stop leaving rooms and your life locked to him. Open up everything. Because a lot of times the reason we're not blessed and we're not getting all that we need out of God is because we have not surrendered everything unto him. You understand what I'm saying? Woman of God, you're going to need to surrender that closet, all right? And we got some men that wear some funny little things, too. <laughs> all right? Right up in there with them tight pants and all that. And them little shirt, them little biking shirt, them, them Hebrew like to wear. You're too thick for that, boy. You can't wear that. What's wrong with you? Man. One day I was in my neighborhood, I tried to run in one of them little things, man. My neighbor said, boy, you're making us all look bad, boy. Go. <laughs> we too thick for that. Listen to me now. Listen to me. Let's give you some scripture. All right? Pastor, why? Why? Romans 14. Romans 14, 13. Why can't I wear what I want? All right? And I'm going to NLT so we can all understand. Look what he say. He say, so let's stop condemning each other. Decide instead to live in such a way that you will not cause another believer to stumble and fall. Part of legitimate Christianity is you saying, I'm not going to do anything that can cause somebody else to fall. All right? All right? Woman of God, you may not know, but your dress affects the men of God. It really does. It really does. We are visual creatures. Amen. And you wearing all of that, you know, I mean, you can cause some trouble, you know, in a young man, in a married man. Amen. Even old man these days. You, you, I mean, you know what I'm saying? So, so you just need to just, just slow your roll on that. All right. Cover that up, baby. Your royalty. Purity. And modestly. All right? You don't want to do nothing that's going to cause your brother or sister to stumble. Listen, you, you, you're not a man. I'm, I'm, I'm here representing mankind. All right? Don't wear that. All right? You can put a man in a bad place. You married women, you ain't got no excuse. The Bible says when a man looked at a married woman and lusted after her, he had committed adultery with her in his heart. And here you are, setting men up when you walk out the house. You're leaving them, I'm telling you, you're leaving them bleeding on the sidewalk. You know? You're causing them to sin. And you ain't got no excuse for that. You know? In 1 Corinthians 8 9, you know, Pastor, I'm free to do what I want. I got liberty in Christ. I could wear whatever I want. But the Bible says, 1 Corinthians 8, 9, but you must be careful so that your freedom does not cause others with a weaker conscience to stumble. Yes, we are free, but we're not free to do what we want. We're not free, amen, to hurt other people. I know you want to hurt other churches, but you're going to hear it here because I preach the Bible, baby. You understand what I'm saying? And, and the Bible don't want you going out there wearing things. Yeah, you got freedom, but your freedom stops. Amen. What a safety your brother begins. Anybody hear me up in here? All right. In America, we're free. But when my freedom encroaches upon the safety of somebody else, that's not freedom no more. I can't walk into a movie theater packed up and yell, fire! What well, freedom of speech? No, that's not freedom of speech. Because you can get somebody hurt. Your freedom is curtailed by the safety of another. Amen? And woman of God, your freedom of dress, the freedom to pick your garments, has to be limited, amen, by the spiritual safety of the brothers that you go encounter during the day. Come on, give God some glory, amen? Amen? Romans 14, 19 is a beautiful scripture about this. The whole chapter of Romans 14 is awesome. In NLT it says, so then let us aim for harmony or peace in the church and try to build each other up. Now listen, when you're dressing like that, you're going to do everything but bring peace in the church. 
Because every woman that sees you is going to be talking about you and they're going to be covering their husband eye and all this stuff like that. You're not bringing peace, all right? But our goal as Christians, amen, is always to edify one another. When we wake up, we should always say, how can I bless my brother or bless my sister? How can I build my brother up? How can I build my sister up? That is what the heart of the Christian should be. Because whatsoever we do to the least of these, our brethren, we have done it unto him. So we wake up saying, how can I bless the body? Woman of God, with your wardrobe, you can either bless the body or curse the body. Amen? And you should want to wake up and look at your closet. What you going to wear to work or to school or come to church and say, how can I build up the body with what I wear? Amen? And modesty is the answer. And once again, you ain't got to go turtlenecks and, you know what I'm saying, skirts down. You wearing a train like a wedding dress to church. You ain't got to do all that. Just stick to what we say. Don't be from Cleveland. Stop showing your equator and your prime meridian. And don't be a pentite, can night, and all of that stuff. It can't be too tight. All right? One last scripture, saints. I like, but I like the way I dress, Pastor. It's my style. Paul said this. Even if my food make my brother to stumble. I'm supposed to love my brother so much that I would stop eating if my food make my brother stumble. In 1 Corinthians 8, 13, so if what I eat cause another believer to sin, you know how important food is? He say even if it's something I'm eating causing my brother to sin, and you worried about your style, you can have the same style with a little undie shirt. If what I eat cause another believer to sin, Paul say, I will never meet again as long as I live, for I don't want to cause another believer to stumble. Do you hear men here, woman of God? Amen. Do you hear men here, man of God? Amen. All right? God, a man of God, you got to stand up in your house. You got you to gotta look what your daughters have on. Stop thinking about yourself. Open your eyes to your daughters and tell them, go back in there and change. Go put something else on, all right? Now, you can't do that with your wife. It's going to be trouble if you try to, all right? But all, you, I mean, you, open your mouth, though. Babe, I, I, don't, I don't feel comfortable with that that you have on, you know? And she's going to respect it. She's not built to understand the, the man's mind, all right? She just trying to put something on. And she just happy, finally, I done found something. You know? But you got to be there to say, nah, babe. Uh-uh. They don't do equators at Philadelphia. <laughs> Come on, give God some glory. Amen? <laughs> y'all, I wanted to get y'all out of here early. But all that geography got us late tonight. Aura PM, royalty, purity, and modesty. Let's have a word of prayer. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Father, we thank you so much for your word tonight. We give you praise for the people of God being able to come in and, and hear a tough word, God. But, but the truth is, God, we know that your truth Hallelujah, that your truth, if we know the truth, that the truth will set us free. And we're living in a bound community, God. We're living in a, in a, in a community, God, that's, that's broken. And Father, our prayer is, is that you would fix us. So we're asking, God, that you would awaken the gatekeepers, God. That you would awaken the gatekeepers, God. That the gatekeepers, okay, would get back on the post, God. God, we need some, some watchmen, God. We need our women of God to be pure again, to be royal again, to be modest again. Father, where the woman of God at, God? Where the woman of God at? Where the woman of God? In so many places, God, the women are treated like they don't, they don't matter, they don't mean anything, but God, we can't do it without them. They're the backbone, God. 
We need them tonight. We need them, God. We need them to know that they have worth tonight. We need them to know that they can be pure tonight. And if they are pure, God, woo! Woo! Man ain't going to have no choice but to be pure too. Father, I'm late already. It don't matter now. I want the daughters of God to come up. Come up, daughters of God. I don't care about the time. Come up. My wife, come on the stage. Daughters of God, come up. The daughters of the king, come up. Come up. Come up. Royalty, come up. I don't know what we have to do tonight. I don't know what we have to do tonight. What are gatekeepers at? What are gatekeepers at? If you lock the door, baby, look, ain't nobody, ain't nobody breaking. What are gatekeepers at? And it's my heart, amen. Listen, I'm a cancer vision. I, it's my heart. I, you saw those little robes I kind of did? I think we got to go back to that. I think we got to make something cool, something fashionable, something that's got some color in it that our daughters won't mind wearing that's going to be like a badge of honor. When they walk in, it's going to mean royalty, purity, and modesty. And all the, and all the people in Philadelphia are going to know that that's a young lady that's keeping herself for the most high God. I don't know. Listen, listen, listen. Anybody that can sew or do anything else, look for me something. Look for me something with that style. Because it can't be ugly. They're not going to wear it. Look for me something. When you find it, bring it to me. And I'm going I'm, I'm to I'm choose out of the selection. Miss Chantel, you good with that, uh, what you do, sewing machine? Amen? That's what that's called? Y'all get it. Huh? Get it. I'm casting vision. I'm casting vision. And if you get something that's good, I'm going to put some money behind it. Amen? Amen? I'm going to invest in it. All right? The daughters of Zion are going to be clothed in it again. And they're going to walk in period. Amen? Of many colors. Look at that thing. Of many colors. Look at that thing. How beautiful. Hallelujah. Now listen. Let's pray together tonight. Let's pray together tonight. Every single y'all, every single one of y'all represent a gate to a city. Don't let the enemy through your gate. Watch your gate. Watch your gate. Watch your gate. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you for these gatekeepers right now. I thank you for the women of God, the daughters of Zion. I thank you for the Hebrews, the Christians alike, Lord God, because, hey, they engrafted into the family, the household of God. I thank you that we are royal to here, God. Royal daughters and royal sons. God, in the name of Jesus, I pray, God, that every woman that struggled with worth tonight, God, that that lie of the devil be broken in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Yahshua Hamashiach. In the name of Jesus. We break every lie, every verbal abuse that was cast and spewed upon you. And we speak life unto dry bones right now. We speak life to wounded souls right now. We speak life. You are special and important and worth enough for your God to come down from heaven to earth. In fact, he thought you were to die for. He thought you were to die for. He, he died for you. That's how much you were. That's how much you were. You are not trash. You are treasure. 
You are trash. You are treasure. It's enough. It's enough. It's enough. It's enough. It's enough. We're not going to act like trash no more. Say it with me. It's enough. It's enough. It's enough. It's enough. It's enough. Touch hands right now. God, I thank you so much for the daughters of Zion. Now I pray, God, that it is the anointing that destroys the yokes. We pray for every ounce of anointing that's on this ministry to come down on every yoke that's upon your women, God. Every yoke of bondage, of addiction, every yoke, Lord God, of soul ties, God. I pray that there are some in here, God, who done messed up, God. But I, you are the God who can make all things new, Lord God. In the mighty name of Jesus. I pray from heaven right now, those who did it without a, with a lack of knowledge, God, that you would restore the years the locusts had stolen, Lord God. I pray for these singles, God. I pray for a heavenly new virginity, God. I, I pray, God, that they would be clothed with a coat, a royal coat of many colors, God. I pray that we just thinking that the teens going to do it, God, but there's some 30, 40, 50-year-olds that's going to put the coat on too, Lord God. We got some antlers up in here, God. We break every effect of every soul tie in your life. Every wrong man that you'd have been with, we cover that soul tie, that wound with the blood of Jesus right now. We break every shackle right now. Every bad thing that those encounters tried to place on you, we rebuke it right now in the name of Jesus. We pray that you would, Lord God, hallelujah, operate in love and power and a sound mind in the mighty name of Jesus. Right now, let the anointing Break every chain in your life. Every chain. I pray against lust in the women of God. That they would not lust over men. Lay down with men. I break it now in the name of Jesus. I break God, hallelujah, that, that, that father void. Where they land with men because daddy didn't love them right. Father, I pull that old root out. I pull that old unforgiveness, that bitterness out. I, I, I pull that rejection out in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, God. And God, where that rejection came out, I sow in the field of their heart, I sow right now the love of God, love of the Father in heaven. Ain't no need to lay with another man. Because Father God loves you. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God, break every chain. God. Break every chain. Bless every woman here, God. Every woman here, God. Every woman here, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, every woman here, God. Every woman here, God. Every woman here, God. Hallelujah. You want anything? You got anything? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, I just stand in agreement, Lord. Daughters, oh God. Oh God, I thank you, Lord God, that there is a treasure hidden in these earthen vessels. God, God that you would begin to pour out, Lord God. God, that God, that you would touch them in a special way. You see the voids in their lives. But, Father, I ask that you would fill every void, oh, God. God, I ask, Lord God, that you would even stop all the mental attacks in the name of Jesus. You are worth it. Father, I pray, God, that every area that the devil is tempting them, that you would cast it down, God, the worthlessness, God, the loneliness some people feel in this place. Oh, God, I pray that you would comfort every heart, God. Touch every woman of God. 
God, I pray that you would begin to build them Build them up. Hold your sister hand tightly and build us up, Father. Build us up like Nehemiah is building that wall. Build us up, Daddy. Build us up, God. Oh, God, for your glory, God. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, give God some glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, listen, we got to get out of here. I'm going to pray the sinner's prayer with you. I'm going to bless you, amen. Ladies, listen to me. Ladies, God is on the move, ladies. Amen. About 200 women from Philly all reading the book of Nehemiah together. They all reading it together. Amen. I need, you, I need you to get on the Sisters United Network with your phone, amen. I don't have the number. Maybe we can put it up there. But get on it. Start reading with Amen. I didn't even I didn't even know all that was gonna come out, but but you a wall builder, you a gatekeeper. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And 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 we all just gotta play our part, sisters. And so do what you can. How do they get on Sisters United, babe? Pull pull up the uh, the Sisters United uh, um, slide, I guess you would call it. Or ask somebody on the side. Or ask somebody on the side. I'm a good repeater, y'all. Or ask somebody, <laughs> ask somebody on the side of you. Amen. And, uh, and you'll be able to plug in. Sisters, look, we love y'all. We love y'all so much. You know what I'm saying? I, man, you're worth something. You're worth something. Messing around with lesser men. You know the type of prince that's going to have to come to deserve you? You know the type of prince? I, you know the type of a... You know what type of... All right? Stop playing with leftovers. Stop playing with leftovers. Your word way more than that. Grace, come on. We're going to pray with them before we go. Saints, y'all heard the gospel in them. I want you to tell, tell the Lord. Say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus I, admit, I admit I've done some wrong, I've done some wrong but, I believe but I believe that you love me. You, love me. you died for me. You were buried. And on the third day, the third day you, rose. you rose. Lord, Lord save, me, save me, a sinner. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Come on, give God some glory. I'm going to walk with you. I'm going I'm to go. I'm going to go out this way. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless you. May he keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious to you. May he lift up his countenance upon you and bless you with shalom. Bless you with peace. Royalty. Royalty. Sons and daughters of the king. I pray he bless you and bless your children and your children's children. We ask that he would do that for you. We ask that he would do that for you. That he would do it in Jesus. You don't found your prince. You, you don't found your prince. Hallelujah. You'll do it in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Love y'all. Be blessed.